I think censor is just a, a way out. If you're going to go, you got to go. In other words, if the, if the goods are there, you must impeach. Nancy Pelosi uh, saying, if the goods are there, you must impeach. And we are all, you know, maybe once the Mueller report comes out, we'll find out if the goods are there. Maybe that's what will finally do it for us. In studio right now, an honor and a pleasure to have Hans von Spakovsky in here with us. Hans, thanks for coming in the studio well, today. Well, it's great to see you in person. Yeah, absolutely. And also, um, I need to ask you, what name, first name do you normally go by? Because I think I saw you Jim, James, or JJ at, differently every time. That's, yeah. It's the CIA thing. It is? Yeah, yeah. Well, Mr. Carafano is in studio oh, God, with you us. you ruined it! <laughs> it's like that guy in the commercial, and I have to jump over the side. Uh, uh, there are other names we call him, but we, yeah. we can't say that in polite <laughs> company. You'll have to tell me on break what, uh, what your favorite ones are. Uh, well, you guys are in studio with us today because tonight you are going to Lindenwood, the Jay Scheidegger Center, hosted by Mark Cox in the speaker series here. Um, really exciting. I think people can... Possibly still get tickets at 971talk.com slash events. It's a massively large room. And I think, how many tickets did I hear were out so far? Did I hear five? 500. 500, wow. 500, 500 wow. tickets. Wow. Well, it's because you guys are rock stars. Yeah. Uh, and Mark that's, Cox as well. That's almost as many cousins as I have. <laughs> <laughs> In the Midwest here. Um, so you guys are going to be talking about all the things that you normally talk with us, but there and 971talk.com slash events to get your tickets reserved free but we'd like to make sure that we know you're coming so we can accommodate so so first i want to talk about nancy pelosi well I'll go to hans first here nancy pelosi says that if the goods are there you must impeach censure is is not even worth the political peril i guess is there any evidence whatsoever right now that the goods are there to, to for the uh, democrats to risk the the, the politics behind impeachment n- no I, I i don't think there is R- remember the supreme court says High crimes and misdemeanors. And I have not seen evidence of any high crimes committed by uh, the president. Look, the, the big high crime that the Democrats have been depending on was a finding by Mueller that he had colluded with the Russian government to fix the election. That turned out to be a total non-starter. It didn't happen. Mm-hmm. So now they're trying to say, oh, somehow he obstructed justice. Well, uh, the proof the proof is in the pudding, to use a phrase. Uh Bob Mueller had two years, $30 million. There were no (laughs) limitations of any kind put on him to conduct his investigation. So where's the obstruction of justice? None occurred. So when you hear Nancy Pelosi talking like that, what I was saying in the middle of the Mueller investigation was that the the existence of of the thought that collusion could have happened was extremely political value for the valuable for the Democrats. Right. So the conclusion of that investigation was probably pretty intimidating because it could go one way or the other, and it certainly didn't go the way of the Democrats. So now I'm assuming that this idea of obstruction existing is as valuable to the Democrats politically as the investigation into collusion was originally. So you see William Barr as the attorney general investigating the investigation. And on the other side, you have Gerald Nadler, who's subpoenaing anybody who he can muster. Right. Where where are you keying in your focus right now to see how this is going to evolve, what the American people are going to have revealed to them in these two investigations existing, one with the attorney general and the other with Gerald Nadler? Uh, I, I actually think that all this talk about impeachment and all this talk about supposed obstruction of justice is is basically because the Democrats are uh, afraid of what the Justice Department is actually going to find. So it's a uh, distraction. Oh, yeah, it is a distraction uh, because I think they're afraid of what they're going to find over the investigation going on right now into how this whole thing got started. The the reason being that look it's. All the evidence indicates that the only thing the FBI and and the Obama Justice Department had when they went to the secret FISA court, I mean, that's the court that's used for our counterintelligence operations. It's it's used for uh, espionage, foreign agents, so forth. The only evidence they had when they went to that court and swore, swore that the (laughs) facts and and everything they had were true was the Steele dossier, a, 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 a political opposition research report that even James Comey admitted had been unverified. Mm-hmm. So they really didn't have any credible evidence on which to justify opening up an investigation, unless there's something that just we don't know about yet. And if that's the case, then it's very clear that no investigation should have been opened and that the FBI officials and DOJ lawyers who were involved 
uh, not only abused their authority, but may have broken the law. So in in the midst of all those investigations taking place, I get a news alert that says that Iran's shooting a drone, a United States drone out of uh, international airspace. And, and I, I have invested a lot more time into studying these investigations <laughs> than knowing what's going on in Iran. Uh, Jim Carafano in studio with us here talking lots of foreign policy on, on a regular basis, but specifically today, it's a pleasure to have you in here with us. When you see a story like that, what's your initial reaction? Uh, since we, you know so much more about this than okay. I do. Well, speaking about, can I tell you why, how I knew, first knew that this whole thing about the Russian collusion was bogus? Yeah, this, please. So, and, and it's in the Mueller report. So, you know, you get a searchable Mueller report. If you type in Heritage, you will find a reference, right? And you remember that this all started when um, uh, then uh, Attorney General Sessions had to recuse himself, <laughs> right? Because... Because he was untruthful because he had these secret meetings with the Russian ambassador that he did not disclose, right? Yeah. And they said there were three meetings. Well, I, I was at one of those meetings. Tell me about that. So this, no. <laughs> so, no, seriously. Yes, it's, it's in the, it is actually in the Mueller report. You can't make this up. So during the, the, the um, Republican convention, they invite all the ambassadors from the, to the United States to observe the convention. And then part of they do is they put a program on for them. Uh, there to kind of educate them on the issues and stuff. And we partnered with the the organization that, that put that program on. And one of the things that we organized was a talk by Jeff Sessions, mm -hmm. who is then, you know, one of the president's kind of chief supporters. And so there was, so this was an officially sanctioned State Department event. And, th and there must have been about 150 people in the room, including about 60 ambassadors. And I don't even think Sessions knew who was in the room. He just came in. He talked. And after he talked, all the ambassadors lined up to kind of shake his hand and stuff. And so one of them was the Russian ambassador. And that was one of the things that was reported as a secret meeting. A handshake. With the Russian ambassador. And the irony secret thing Secret with all these other ambassadors present. <laughs> the guy that was right behind him was the Ukrainian ambassador. So oh it's just nuts. And when I saw that, I go, this just is obvious. This is just nuts. But there certainly would have, there's got to be an agenda. If, if if that's the type of evidence you need to support something, right. that this this kind of smells funny. And we've spent how many, how many, I forgot, Hans, how many the, millions the, of- 30, 30 million dollars, two years worth of an investigation. You know, you think Jim, I cannot believe that you told everybody about this super secret <laughs> meeting with a hundred people yeah, in it, including right. ambassadors the from suits all over will the be world. knocking down that studio right. door here in I any mean, second i can't for, wait to witness it we're know, on facebook live right now so please be watching <laughs> you're gonna want to see this go down but i mean for something um so you know something that you know flimsy and look it, let's not pretend that it's just about this because w when you're reading the news about what's iran it, the everybody is equally hyperbolic because oh my god trump's gonna bomb everybody and he's just crazy and everything else um, so here's what we know. So Global Hawk is a U.S. surveillance drone, costs about $130 million or so. It's about the size of a commercial airline. It is a big thing. Wow. And the, the, it is probably the most sophisticated uh, surveillance drone in the world. F first of all, we know for a fact that Global Hawk does not have to fly over Iranian airspace to monitor what's going on in the Gulf. And Global Hawks don't get lost, right? So the notion that somehow the Iranians shot down this because it invaded their airspace that's just a lie really okay um, so we know that right and and the president was actually right when he said in the in the press conference with um the the canadian prime minister well maybe somebody made a mistake because this the 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 what what shot it down is actually a new system that the iranians have just fielded um it's actually just became operational not long ago we don't know actually know the status of its crews and how it operates and everything else so who, like who knows what really happened but the the thing is is look and, and the president's been very clear on this and he is he is i i think if you you know take the tweeting and the whatever else aside he has had i think some of the best foreign policy that we've had since dwight eisenhower or ronald reagan i swear and um the number one thing the united states is trying to do in the gulf is keep the waters open it's 15 percent of the world's oil flows through there it's a critical um critical straits in the Gulf, um, maintaining freedom of seas is one of the principles the United States has been with forever. We actually pre-position assets to do that. That's the mission. We don't have to respond militarily to the Iranians to do that. If, if the Iranians do something more provocative where they're putting American lives in danger, we can respond uh, proportionally. I think the big thing here is, is the, what the, we have to maintain pressure on the Iranians and the more stupid stuff they do like this, I think the more the international community has to line up with the president. So I, I think 
I think we've been spot on on the strategy. I don't know what people are freaking out about. Well, really. you know, I, I would say the people who don't understand the the details that really matter when it comes to a conflict like this. I'm watching uh, CNN right now, and it, it just ran a headline that saying that the Iran attack on the drone raises the r- risk of war. So, yeah. so that that just to a novice, if if even, and I'll yeah, but, but award myself but that. Is that are serious? Forgetting history, Jim, wasn't it in the late 1980s that the Iranians kind of did the same thing? Right. And and what are we, didn't we like sink half their navy? There was so it was, no. It was big called war. the tanker war, and what Reagan did was he did exactly what Donald Trump is doing. We we put military forces in the Gulf. We we kept the Gulf open. If if somebody came out and tried to hurt somebody, we stopped them, and that was it. So um, I, I think this 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 war drumbeat stuff is just nuts. P- you know, people don't fall into war. You know, uh, you know, nineteen fourteen happened. You know, because everybody wanted to go to war and they were mm-hmm. looking for an excuse. That's not the situation here. This is some of the most irresponsible reporting I've ever seen. But you know, going back to the coverage on 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 the impeachment and all this other stuff, it's just par for the course. Mm-hmm. It, it seems to me. It seems if if you can step back from it, and I would I would assume you are both in a great position with your your work with the Heritage Foundation. You are the go-to for information. I know that when we were talking about campaign contributions, Hans von Spakovsky finds his names on the lips of, of the President of the United States <laughs> and, as an expert and as as, as you very Which much... saying be, Hans von Spakovsky is no mean feat, right? Yeah, do you know how many... <laughs> when I had my Saturday show and you came on with me a couple of t- Saturdays, which I really appreciated because right. it's not easy to get people who want to give me their Saturday evenings uh, between 5 and 7 p.m. here... Um, I had to practice. I, I I saw your name first, and I was like, "Is this a joke?" Because because this sounds so above my <laughs> my pay grade to be able to talk to somebody named Hans von Spakovsky, and I was just like, "Okay, Hans von Spakovsky," and I would just say it over and over and over again. And I think when I welcomed you on the show, it'd probably be funny to go back and listen to. You. I think I just butchered it <laughs> up to pieces. Um, but being able to be in the conversation of the president of the United States talking about these these issues, you guys have a very deep understanding of what is going on with all of these stories to see the circus that that rises to whatever comes in front of the cameras on right. cable news and, and the stories that actually grab people's attention. Are you like, but no, pay attention to this thing over here. This is where the real story is. Don't be distracted by the way a lot of these these stories are formulated for the American people from an entertainment perspective. So I'll give, I'll give an example, and, yeah. and maybe Hans can give one. So there's an article just in the Washington Post like yesterday where they basically say that the president's at war with his own National Security Council because he's really unhappy with the advice they gave Yeah, I've Venezuela. heard that. It's concerning to me when the, I don't know what's going and on. And that's a complete lie. Like, I, I know the people I know the people in the White House. I know everybody that's worked this issue. I, and it's just, it's just not true. Fake news? And, well, it, you know, I'm sure there are some people that leaked something. And, and here's what goes as a reporter. You don't have to believe it's true. All you need to get somebody is to tell you that we think this is true, and then you can print that, yeah. right? And it, but it's just very irresponsible reporting. I mean, who'd they talk to? So, mm-hmm. and, then they, and then they report this like it's gospel truth. And then, of course, all the yahoos get on Twitter, and they start tweeting about all this stuff, and, and, and full, knowing full well that it's probably not even true. Yeah. It, I, and you've probably seen this happen a thousand times. Well, I'll give you another example, and I, and I have a article coming out about this soon um remember when the, the president was asked in his interview right to gr- and a frenzy occurred when someone said well if a foreign official came to you and said you know they've got dirt on a yeah on a, on a political figure in the u.s would you listen to him and he said well yeah i'd, I'd listen to what they said and all of a sudden there were all these uh reporters and commentators yeah. well they were all saying oh that, that would be a violation of federal law Well, I used to be a commissioner on the Federal Election Commission, and uh, listening to someone talk (laughs) or somebody providing you with information, that is not a violation of the Federal Election Campaign Act. Now, look, you can can argue about the wisdom of doing that, but the idea uh, that it's a violation of law is just simply not, not true. And you had all these people who don't know anything. About the, do you the, laugh at that, or does that frustrate you when well, you see some, it? Well, sometimes I laugh at it, but sometimes it, it's frustrating. But y- you often see people making all these claims about federal law and who's violating it who don't know the first thing about what they're talking about. Yeah. Well, we'll continue this conversation in just a minute. 314-241-9797 if you'd like to call the show as well and join this conversation. We have Hans von Spakovsky in studio with us along with Jim Carafano, both with the Heritage Foundation and both joining Mark Cox tonight at the uh, Speaker Series event with these two fine individuals at the J. Shire. 